This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 166, recorded on May 8th, 2014. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all your favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. There's reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here in a beautiful, and we had a thunderstorm come through earlier today. Beautiful weather here in Bellevue, Nebraska. I love the spring in uh, Bellevue. It's great to be in the Midwest here in the spring. And of course, we post the show with world class show notes each week. Although, if you looked at last week's show notes, they're hardly world class. I apologize for that. Out at the Average Guy. TV. If you have questions, comments, or contributions, you can contact the show. Send me an email at uh, jim at TV. You can track me down on Twitter at jcollison or now call in those questions. Something new, Andrew, for you. You can call in those questions, 402-478-8450, and we'll play those questions right here on the program. Uh, comments, uh, crank calls, uh, even obscene phone calls would all be fine. Some of, If they're good enough, we'll get those played here on the show. 402 402- Four seven eight eight four five zero. I challenge you to make that call, and uh, I accept leave, the challenge. Leave me, <laughs> leave me a message. I believe you will do that too. Leave me a message, and we'll play it here on the show. And now, Home Gadget Geeks is a part of the Geeks Network. You can find this show and many other great podcasts over at thegeeksnetwork.com. And Dave's bringing a few more on, so we got some cool stuff coming up. You might want to. The, if you go to that site now, thegeeksnetwork.com, it's not real fancy. Just a few podcasts. There's four of them out there. we got a few more we'll be adding over the next month or two, and uh, so you might want to watch that. Join us in chat, watch, or listen live, and you can find all the navigation and everything you need, including all the subscription links to this podcast, as well as Cyber Frontiers, which uh, uh, Andrew or uh, Christian and I have been doing over the last uh, couple months out at The Average Guy. TV. All right, we're going a little old school tonight. I kind of like it. We're back to the uh, the early days of uh, what we used to do with home tech, and uh, and a guy I haven't talked to in a while, but uh, he's coming all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Andrew Morris. Andrew, how are you? I'm good. Good. I'm good. I have been exceptionally busy for the last however many months, and yeah, I think um, we tried to hook up two or three weeks ago, and it was a monumental fail. So. Yeah. We did. We did fail. I was like, we almost were there. We had it all set in <laughs> place, and then like two minutes before the show started, you're like, I got to take this call. <laughs> and yeah, I'm like, it was a bit of a, a bit of a max. It was a bit of a bit of a get smart moment. Missed it by that much. <laughs> yeah, just that much. Well, Andrew, it's good to have you back. And uh, to his yeah. right, and uh, my uh, my compadre over at Home Server Show for a lot of years, and I try to bring him back on at least every other month. John Zadler. John, how are you? Very good. Thanks for bringing me in there, Jim. And hi, Andrew. And hi to the guys in the uh, chat there. Hey, um, did you know? Because you told me, and I put it, you're the guy, so I got to give you the credit, Jim. All right, all right, uh, Andrew. I mean, I mean, Jim. Uh, uh, I put this in my calendar. M- let me see. May seventh was the anniversary of the first home server show podcast. Oh. So that was 2008. So that makes it what six years? How many uh-huh. fingers we got? Was it was it really yeah. 08 or was it an 09? Well, I know the uh, Media Smart Server. Uh, let me see, uh, Drashna can let us know. I think Windows Home Server came out in 2007. I think at the end of 2007. So um, I think we started 2008. 2008. I'm going to say five years. I thought it was May of 09. I think then David started fault. it. I think uh, that I was wrong. I think David started it in 08, and we joined May of 09. Show 40, something yeah. like that. Okay. okay. Home, 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 server, home server was released in November 2007. Yeah. Yeah. So, I could be wrong, but but May 7th, I think, was the first time we were on. I did a whole series on that a ways back. And uh, and so May is also a great month. Dave McCabe's birthday is May 11th. Yours, John, is May 24th. Mine is May 26th. Andrew, is your birthday? When's your birthday? July. July. Well, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You're out. You're out. <laughs> I, I, I was only going to be truly impressed if one of you had your birthday on the 4th of July. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, mate, we were revolutionary. Day. We were a revolutionary, but <laughs> I wasn't born on the 4th of July. <laughs> yeah. The 4th of May. 
May the 4th. Uh, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. In this country, this year, May the 4th, Sunday, May the 4th, I cannot believe this. People went Star Wars crazy this year. It was I, like I've never seen before. I ran a marathon uh, on that day, a half marathon, 13.1. And um, one guy was dressed up like Chewbacca. And he ran the whole half in a big Chewbacca outfit. And I was like, what a, uh, unbelievable. You'd have yeah. serious issues with thermal overload, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it was warm, too. I mean, and this was like a full Chewbacca yeah. suit. It was uh, been a woman in the Princess Leia outfit instead of you know, this guy in a freaking rug. <laughs> That would have been a lot better. <laughs> hey, everybody, look over there. Princess Leia. For sure, yeah. Well, in our community, you know, we're all a bunch of nerds, and uh, and I'm sure you celebrated May the 4th in some way. Uh, that was Star Wars related. I know we did here. And, uh, you know, then I get, the next day I've heard somebody say it's Revenge of the Fifth or something like that, you know? Uh, okay. So, and, uh, da -doo <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Wait, let just, me look for that Google sound. <laughs> there you go. Add the music. Uh, add the the, 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 uh, the effects. <laughs> I think is what it's called. Yeah, May the Fourth. Uh, it was just that Sunday. It was full. It was in the comics. It was everywhere. I just can't believe how we kind of we we celebrated that uh, Star Wars tradition all over the place. So hopefully you had a great May the Fourth. Good to have uh, both of you guys back. It, you know, if we, some of you, uh, if you've been listening to us, just maybe in the last year, Andrew used to be a regular appearance here on uh, on Home Tech from show one. I think I had you on. Yeah, all it was the pretty way early. To a hundred maybe, and then the wheels began to wobble a little bit. And yeah. Had kids. How how are the kids? We we should ask. We we uh, all watched them. We watched them be born here in the show. So. Well, not yeah, pretty well, close to. Um, there's. <laughs> yeah, I think I think had I gone in and said, "Hey, are we gonna do a live hangout from the delivery room?" I might have got sure crucified. Love that one. She oh yeah. That, that one yeah. Yeah, Kids can I do okay? what? <laughs> yeah, they're um, they're 17 months old uh, Monday. Wow, that's so, awesome. Yeah, they're um, yeah, they're um, man, almost talking. So our life is almost officially over. <laughs> yeah, just just pretty soon they'll be mouthy teenagers. Yeah, on, yeah. You know, on the gadgets. So they, have they have they picked up any gadgets yet? Have you given them anything? Are they are they tablet children? Do they know how to operate a, a phone already? Um, their mother is quite happy to give them a mobile phone running a Fisher Price application or something like that. Whereas I'm very much no, take it away. Really? You know, I, 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 yeah, I want, I want to keep him away from technology for as long as I possibly can. Uh, you got to give in, man. Nah, nah. So I think I'll win. I'll, 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 so I'll win. Hard. I know. Well, good luck. Wish you the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's been nice knowing yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I got five kids. Huh? Hey, Ginger, I got five kids. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we, which we, way uh, is going to go? We um we gave you know we we tried I broke the kids in on technology just as quick as I could. Nah, it's not a right or wrong. I I applaud you for trying, Andrew, for you to keep. Oh look, I know I'm gonna I know I'm gonna fail. <laughs> it's so hard. It's gonna be a dismal fail. <laughs> it's just gonna be a challenger. Just woof. And yeah, uh, you will yeah. Well, it and it's good. I I I totally applaud the effort because uh, there are some studies that show that some of those activities can really Actually, it doesn't help their development. It slows it down some, and so it's. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to uh, to get them to be creative in other ways. Yeah, look, I mean, we've got we've got relatives who've just finished doing a lap of Australia camping for a year. Um, I think they're on the road for they're on the road for about a week short of of twelve months, and their daughter, about three months in, um, found a you know tablet sized rock and a and an iPhone sized rock and they drew buttons and, and whatnot oh, on it and yeah. that, that that was her iPhone and her iPad for the next ten months. Wow. And it, this this kid came back, you know, she went away three years old, came back four years old, and she can have a full adult conversation where her cousins who are the same age have got not a clue. Yeah. Because well, this kid's just been socialized with adults and no exposure to technology at all. Yeah. And to, yeah. and to me, that's that's about you know having your kids being adjusted. Yeah, no, that's a good point. 
That's yeah. a really good point. That that, yeah. that that's my that's my take. Whether I win or not, yeah, it remains to be yeah. seen. I'll, I'll let I'll let you know in a couple of years' time how it's working Let's out. That's how it goes. <laughs> well, yeah. well, next time you're on the podcast, three years from now, <laughs> we'll we'll check Settle back. And hopefully, it won't be that long. Hopefully, it won't uh, yeah. be that long. But yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You know, we uh, I was just at an event tonight, and I was I met a guy, and I told him I'm a podcaster. He's like, Oh, tell me about your podcast. I love you know I love new podcasts, and so he's like, I've never met a podcaster before. So we were talking and stuff, and and uh, it, it's it's one of those things you know, as we've made the change from home tech to home gadget geeks. I, I, I do I don't want to just be all gadgets. I like this conversation about because a lot of us have kids that are you know in those ages. John, your you, your kids and my kids are all teenagers at this point. That's kind of where we're at, but we all have got kids at that spot. So I, I'm going to reserve the right. We're going to have a little bit of family chat from time to time <laughs> and, uh, and do those kinds of things because I, I think that's important. John, we haven't caught up with you in a while. I haven't even seen you on Home Server Show because I missed, I think, the last time you were on there. What have you been up to recently? Uh, well, one of the things I've been playing around with is uh, my server's been running pretty good, so everything's a little bit quiet there. So you, you haven't and, been messing with it. That's, yeah, that's not the too, too much. A, a little bit. I still keep you know my eye on it there. Once in a while, it's like okay, it's been running too good for too long, you know. So I, I gotta mess it up and stuff. <laughs> but uh, it's been pretty good. So one of the things is my uh, one of my friends there. He uh, he actually he's a collector of uh, model trains, you know, like uh, N scale basically, because he's from Germany. And what, uh, I think there's a trend like uh, in U.S. guys tend to have uh, collect H.O. Uh, H-O. like the different mm -hmm. scales. Yeah, yeah. You, and there's US two. Guys... There's two different. I think my dad was a big train guy. Uh, why I wanted to talk about it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So you see the the U.S. guys kind of go for the H.O. and the uh, European guys tend to go for the N scale, the smaller stuff. And uh, so it's it's a different. Uh, I mean, I got a, a different little, gauge track. Yeah, I got a little mm -hmm. guy. I just took the shell off there. So, I, don't know, I don't know what to compare it to. This engine is about six or seven inches long, whereas a HO would be ten, maybe ten, eleven inches uh, ten, long. Yeah, no, it'd be a good size. It would be, you know, it would be uh, probably as big as your hand and, yeah. you know, and a foot long. Yeah. Yeah. You showed me some pictures. You, I mean, you got a full scale track. I mean, you set up. Is that something? You know, you've got a track on a board that's. I mean, that takes up a good part of a room. Is that something you built, or did you get it yeah. that way? Yeah, well, that's it. Well, one of the interesting things about uh, model railroading is, see, like Andrew, like you were talking about the kids and stuff like that. See, when you get into trains, like me, when I was, let's say, a teenager, instead of going into, like, whatever, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, instead of, like, drinking and stuff, I was a good kid, you know? So if, if I had a part-time job, I collected, uh, saved some money and stuff like that, I would get, I, I got into the, the model train stuff, you know? So building layouts yeah. on, you know, on a little, you know, you, you know how it is. You start on the, on, the, on the carpet, and then once you get a couple of shorts and burn out a few engines then you say okay carpet's not good then you go to a plywood and you make your layout and stuff but what's nice about uh, building trains as opposed to like uh, let's say on a computer you know you're on a computer you're always doing like computer stuff it's always you to screen the monitor whatever but trains what's nice about model trains is you can learn about uh, uh, geography you can learn about uh, wiring you can learn about uh, uh, you know track laying like a like, lot, lot of guys like to just lay tracks a lot of guys like just the electronics uh, photography you know, a lot of guys like uh, just doing scenery. Some guys have crappy track work, but they, they have beautiful scenery because, you know, they have maybe a, uh, you know, they they have a, um, uh, not an interest, well, an interest, but also, you know, they know how to, like my scenery, if you see my pictures of my layout, the scenery is not that great. I, I got to work on on that one. I'm more the electronics kind of guy and stuff. This is why I play around with these little circuits and stuff like that and these, these boards and things that I've built. That's like more or less my that angle. That one looked like it had a flux capacitor bolted on top of it, John. <laughs> what, happens when it, what happens when it hits 88 mile an hour? <laughs> yeah, 1.21 1. 1. Giga, gigawatts, right? 1.21 yeah. gigawatts. gigawatts. To, there you go, fly to the future. So, uh, so you know, when you're bored on one subject, let's say uh, track laying, you can work on scenery, and when you, you know, then you can learn if you want to model a particular era, you know, you can do your, your research and stuff like that. So, the thing is that it covers a lot of fields, and you know, and you can go, you know, not just something that when you're 10 or 15 years old, you you can do this for the rest of your life, you know, till you're like 80 or whatever, until you can't walk anymore. So it's nice that you can do a, a, all these different uh, uh, fields in in that in that uh, subject, and uh, so that that's one of the things. And and I've I so I built this when I was younger, and then. I, you know, uh, I said I'm not going to toss it because it, it it's a lot of work and you have a few thousand bucks put into it. Basically, the layout that I built there, 
Uh, like originally I had a 3x6 layout, which is actually back here somewhere. I actually put it on some, uh, I don't know if you could see it. Oh, yeah. Hold on, it's hold on, let me, let, me, let me save the screen to you so people can see. Okay. See, there's a, I just created this uh, rack of 2x4s, and uh, right there I have a layout that's a 3x6. So that's a complete layout. Trains goes around and, you know, some tracks and sweet turnouts and stuff like that. And then I had a couple of other layouts, uh, I mean, um, shelves there that I had. The layout that I have in, that I set up temporarily in another room there, it's uh, two 3x6 sections and two 2x7 two sections. So uh, I don't know if you have a picture I sent you or whatever, or yeah, maybe I can, I can show Hold on, let me see if I can bring that up. Let's see. You, how did you, did you send those to me on Skype? Yeah, I might have dropped it in the Skype window. Okay, let me see if I can find those again, because I can't. I so it ends up when you connect the four pieces together, like it makes like a big uh, rectangle, and you kind of like stand in the center, and it's um, it's let me see, it's six by thirteen because you have six, two six by threes, and then two two by seven, so it ends up six by thirteen. So it's a fair size layout for uh, for n scale layout. You got a lot of track work, but it's not real. It's more like um, it's a coal mine. It's a Clinchfield Railroad. If uh, if anybody does some research and stuff based on you know the U.S. there, and uh, it's a coal mining railroad. The the tracks are pretty tight. Like some people, like one of my buddies, he likes he's into the mo modular stuff where you you build a section of layout like two by four. And you follow certain guidelines where your tracks start at one end and finish at the same place at the other end. And all these people they they go to like a club and then they plug them all in together. So then they end up having this big. Uh, you know, puzzle of uh, of track, and there what they try, tend to do is use very large uh, radiuses for the for the turn out, um, the corners and stuff like that, so that they can run nice long. Uh, you know, uh, some of the European trains like the French uh, TGV and the Japanese have some you know fast you know those you know the fast trains, so they're they're kind of like long. So on, that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't those would fly off my tracks. Let me tell you, around the corner they would be too <laughs> tight. So. Uh, so I've been playing around. Like I said, I set that up, and one of my side projects that I have also been doing for the past few years is uh, is um, digital stuff. And we can get into that in a yeah, little. Yeah, shoot! I wish I would have. I'm having trouble finding those pictures now, John. Let me um, the the folder I need to get into won't let me in. So let's see if I put them somewhere else. I wish I would have done that in advance. That would have been smart of me to have those in advance. Let's see. Um, yeah, see if you can see if you've got them, and I'll I'll give you the screenshot. It's you know not unlike I've seen a lot of guys do the model train sets, and they you know they set up. I assume you use like a paper mache to create mountains and those kinds of things to make that stuff work, or styrofoam or whatever. Yeah, well, see that that's the other uh, subject. Uh, you know, when you do it, when you go into mountains and stuff, you know, you can say like yeah, when you started off back in the day, you, you used like some kind of uh, wire. To, to make some kind of base and then you put wet paper towels like in the plaster and water solution and you just draped it over and then after you know when it dry you basically it's like papier marche or you can have a cardboard base too if you want it and then you know you paint it and whatever or you can you know some people said okay they'll stack styrofoam like because my layout is meant to be a uh, portable layout you know you have to start thinking about weight you know when you start making um, um, cement castings and you're like well papier pap Papier mache is pretty light, but then if you start putting rock molds that you you know you poured some kind of a wet uh, um, plaster solution, you, you put it into a mold, you stuck it there. If you start adding those all over, that thing's gonna start weighing. You know, it's gonna be a brick. It's gonna weigh you know a hundred pounds or you know hundreds of pounds. So with the styrofoam, that kind of keeps things uh, uh, light. But then you the styrofoam is not as um, you have more rolly hills, you know, up and down. Whereas papier mache, there you can kind of like really have some curvatures into the rock and stuff like that. So the, and then there's all different ways, uh, all different products you can use now, you know. So that that's what's nice is even as technology goes, you know, forward, you can find you can use today's technology to make some mountains. And what's great is also like uh, you know having the internet. You go to YouTube and you see there's tons of videos on how to do stuff. And there's there's books before you know you just had books that you could get. At least now you can go on the internet and see how somebody did something and then copy that. And, then, and also, you know, if it's something that you don't like, if it didn't turn out good the first time, you can always, you know, hopefully you didn't spend too much money. Uh, you can tear it down and just make uh, make another one. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't have those anymore, John. See if you can pull those up for me. OK. 
Okay, let me see. Share screen. How's that going to go? As you're, as you're digging that up, you know, as a kid, my dad, uh, he's the HO, and he had some really nice trains. My brother has them now. And uh, you just got in the garage, and I used to love as a kid, man. I would, and he did not set those up very often. When my brother was younger, they did a. Yeah, there we go. Hold on, let me let me show that to you. They did a setup like what we're showing here. See if you can go full screen that on your on your side, John. Is it already full screen? There we go. Perfect. Um, and uh, man, I just dreamt of those. We just we we never did them, and I always thought I'd love to do a setup like this. Um, of course, we didn't have some of the tech. We're going to talk about this here in a second. We didn't have some of the tech available to us that we do now for these. It was just pretty much, you know, a, a resistor that you would turn on and it would go full speed, and you know, you could get it. You could do various speeds and just let it run. I think with model trains, most of the fun is the setup and the design, and then running it's kind of anticlimactic. You're like, oh, oh, it's going around the, <laughs> it's going around the board. Well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing if you, I mean, if you have like a, a circle, an oval, or whatever, then it's like this is boring. But like in this case of my layout there, like I have a lot of turnouts. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the train starts one way, and then you know, you think it's going to come out at a mountain at a certain place, like around the corner here, let's say. You know, you see, oh, it's going in on the left. It's going to come out on the right. It's like no, it's going to go inside the tunnel. It's going to go up a level. And it's going to come out somewhere else. So it's like you're always kind of where's this train going, and then. And then if you're running trains that are like, let's say, 20, 30 cars, you know, you have to kind of, it, it gets pretty like like scientific or whatever. Like it's not like on a video game or, you know, uh, or uh, watching it on TV. It's like, it, you know, it's real world, right? I mean, if you're coming down the hill too fast, trains are going to derail, cars are going to go flying. You might smash into another train. If you didn't flip the turnout, you know, uh, you, you can have another accident. So there's all stuff that you really have to pay attention to what's going on in the layout. A lot of these guys... Each box car, let's say they, they have different cars and stuff, and they're all numbered, and they have matching cards, you know, and then they say, okay, uh, then they shuffle them like cards, like a deck of cards, you know, and they say, okay, these three cards have to go to, let's say, Fremont Station, and these two cars have to go here, and then you have to go pick up that guy over there. Let me tell you, you could spend the day running trades, and you're going to be like, whew, this is, this is worse than going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, a well, it's 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 a mind thing, right? I mean, it's a it's a puzzle to solve. It's a it's there's something horribly satisfying about this. I mean, you're just you you get done, you do these things, and then I I just love to just watch them, you know, just turn yeah. them on and let them go. And that's uh, it's like starting a fire in the backyard. You know, you just want to sit there and and enjoy it. See, so if what, what do we see in there? Here. Yeah, that's it. This one, uh, you could see this is a part of a mountain, and you can see there's like a, a, a cut there. There's a crease. And basically, like, uh, see, in, in this, that top part will come off. Like, I have sections. This is what's nice about using styrofoam. This section here is styrofoam, and, and then just painted uh, and semi-finished. So that, that part, I'll take it off, and inside there is a helix. You know, so it's how the train, you know, it goes in a circle. And so to bring it up to a higher level, let's say, you know, one level is let's say ground level and the next level is let's say six inches higher but not too far away you can't have a train go up a really steep hill because it would just won't be able to make it pulling the cars and stuff so you actually have to make like a helix a circle that keep, goes over itself once twice three some guys have helix that are ten, you know ten layers high you know whatever if they, if they want if they want to have one let's say one section of their layout uh, at 40 inches and the next section of lay, layout at 80 inches you know let's say shoulder, one is at waist height, one is at shoulder height, then they have to create these helixes. And it's quite an engineering feat in itself to make these helixes where, where you have all the track and you know the trains are going and they're not going to fall over on themselves. So uh, in this photo there, well, you don't see it, but that part comes off and inside there, there's a, a helix so that it brings the elevation about 10 inches. Uh, this is another section. See how you could see here... Uh, you can probably see that divide along the center, uh, along here. How it's it sees, like I said before, it's it's a four section layout. There's a three by six at this end, three by six at the other end, and then and a two by seven on uh, along each center. So here I have like a ten, uh, I don't know, it's a ten track yard. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Drashna in chat is saying hey, there's a lot of similarities between this and building your own home server. You know, in a lot of ways, because you. A lot of us set up the server, and the the most anticlimactic part of it is putting data on it. You know, it's the mm -hmm. it's the drive configuration, and are we going to use RAID or not use RAID, and you know those kinds of things. 
um, it's the setup part that's kind of satisfying, right? I mean, you're 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 seeing that here in a lot of the the uh, of what you're showing us. And this setup, John, you built this years ago. This this piece that we're seeing. Yeah, like all this yeah. stuff I built this years ago. And the only thing recently is well, basically when you set it up, you know, you have to join these sections of track that were like cut because you know these four pieces were individual pieces before. So you just set them up, you you, you put it like a clamp to hold each section to each other into, into this uh, 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 rectangular shape and then you have to put a, a little track in between the, all the, the, you know, so that it crosses into the next section. So you buy what they call flex track and then you just measure the piece you need, you put it down, you solder it, to, you add the little rail joiners, you solder them in place and away you go and then, you know, uh, you're good. See, here's another shot. So you see how like uh, on this, can you see this picture? Yeah. Yeah. See, there's a lower yeah. track and there's a higher track. That's about eight inches difference. So it's like, how do you get that? You know, how can you make the train go that eight inches? See, so it's going from the lower track, it goes into that that mountain, it goes into helix, so it goes over itself twice, and then it comes out over the top. See, so you know, you would expect the train to go in here and come out somewhere else, but it's like, no, it comes out up here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wh which way is going? So like I said, what's neat is it's a bit confusing. Here, this, here's like some scenery made out of just, uh, here I use plaster, I cheated. Back here it is the screen, like I was saying, so you see a piece cut out here, there's a, uh, a mesh, and then I use like a plaster on the paper towels. But at the far end of You can use fiberglass is, too, I'd imagine, right? Yeah, you can lose, use almost whatever, as long as you don't try to use anything that's toxic or <laughs> makes you itch. <laughs> so this whole section here, it's also, this is styrofoam, see, so whereas the other section there was uh, plaster and screen, here, this is all styrofoam, you can see the pink down here. So here I'm going to make like a lake on each side, there's, again, there's these uh, areas here that you could see a line where this, this top part comes out, and the other part comes out. You can get access to trains from underneath the layout, and, uh, but sometimes, you know, when you have like, again, uh, here's a helix on the left, and there's another curve on the right. You know, in case something falls inside the mountain, you want to be able to access it. So I have access from the top or the bottom. You know, it'd be interesting, and I'm sure somebody's done this a bunch, but put a bunch of webcams on the tracks, right, and stream the the entire, you know, the entire thing. Start the trains running, let them run, and pe I bet, I mean, if people are watching birds in nests, I bet people would come out and and watch a train <laughs> move along the track, right? I think they'd find, you know, if you if each of these pictures was a webcam angle, and mm -hmm. you were in a hangout, and people yeah. could kind of just pick the angle they want to watch. Um, yeah. Well, some guys in the YouTube uh, uh, videos, there, like, it, what's nice is with the HO, it's because it's larger. Some of these guys have some cameras that are, you know, uh, Wi-Fi cameras or whatever, and they just mount it on a on a flat car, and then and they actually, and so you're you're looking like the conductor's view, you know, from the cab, you know, <laughs> and the train's going down the road. But now with yeah. the imagine now with cameras being so small and like in cell phones and stuff, I'm sure some guy can figure out a way to uh, to put it on a layout like this, you know, like for n scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so here's again some more track work, and you know what's nice is again when you learn about stuff about scenery and stuff like, see, for instance, here I have a mountain that's it's I don't know it's a little tough to see from this angle here, but basically you know you create like you want to have like a you know perception right just like in photography how you want to you know give a certain illusion or a perception here is like you put a mountain in the center because if I didn't have a mountain here you would see the left you know when you're standing on the one side of the layout you would see the left side and you like you would see the whole section so by having something in the middle and a little higher it breaks your view of what's on the other side so you can't really tell how big the layout is so this is what's nice about incorporating uh, you know, mountains and stuff, and not just having everything flat on the layout because then it would be, it would be boring. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. John, you are also so you got a couple boards there that you showed us, and uh, and and talk. You built those yourself. So talk a little bit about what you're hoping to get out of those. What? what why did you put those together? Okay. Uh, yeah. So again, we were saying with technology in the past, and like you said before. Uh, let's say, you know, you have, basically, the, the idea was you had a, a transformer, you know, you plugged it to the track, uh, you had a throttle that you can adjust the voltage, and the train was on the track, and basically you have these, you have wheels that pick up the current, the positive and negative on each rail, comes into the, up the, the, the wheels, into the DC motor, and as you apply current, 
the, the, the motor will speed up and you'll switch direction, slow down, and that's how you ride trains. If you put five locomotives on the track and you turn that one throttle, all five of them are going to take off. They're all going to go and stop because there's no way of individually uh, controlling each one of the, the, the locomotives. So what guys have been doing over the past, let's say, you know, uh, 50 years, is they create sections, um, blocks. So what happens is they would, and then they would have switches. So now you have, it doesn't become so much like, like real world because you have, you have to have a switch that you, you flip a switch to bring current to a certain section. Now you drive that train into that section. And then now, if the trains, if there's a train in the in the next section um, ahead of it, you have to make sure you don't have control of that. So that guy's running his train, and then when he leaves that section, he has to flip a switch so that you get control of that section before your train gets in there, or else your train will hit the brakes or take off at whatever he's his speed. So now you're flipping all these switches, creating blocks and stuff like that, and it, and it gets pretty messy. It's fun. A lot of these guys they love that doing that kind of stuff, but it's not like prototypical. It's not like the way it is in real world. So one of the things is. Uh, that's come out since the 80s is what they call DCC, which is a Digital Command Control. And basically, basically what that does is between the train, uh, the the wheels of the train and the the, uh, the electric DC motor, there's a circuit board. And what happens is you basically you you put the full power on the track, and then this little chip decides. What you do, you give it, you program this chip. So imagine, like computers now, like these little chips. Each chip, you set it to an ad, what they call an address. So address one, the next locomotive will be address two, three, four, five, and so forth. So what happens is you'll you'll select on your throttle, let's say locomotive ten, and then you'll give power, and then that that guy, that little circuit, is listening on the track, and he's saying, you know, is anybody talking to me? All the locomotives have all these decoders in them. And they're all listening. And he says, oh, no, he's talking to Ted. He's not talking to me, so stay and at zero. That signal is sent through the track, not Wi-Fi, but it's sent through the track. Yeah, it's superimposed okay. on the electrical of the track. Okay. So uh, just like if some people are familiar with the uh, what they call X10, that's been around forever. Uh, basically, X10, it's oh, like okay. you, know, you have your power in your house, and uh, uh, you, you replace the light switch with this uh, with a different switch that has a circuit in it. And now from your bedroom or from another room, you select that light switch number five, and you say turn it on. So and so, what it's doing is it's actually sending that that digital signal. It doesn't like there's no short circuit or anything. It's superimposing that digital signal through wiring in your house, and that guy's listening for his address. When he sees his address, he fl he allows the power to flip to the switch, on off, and so that's how a lot of this whole automation stuff goes. So basically, this is like the same thing, but for the model trains. So you pick your locomotive. And then you tell it, okay, uh, take 2%, 10%, 100% of the track power, switch directions, do whatever. So now it becomes more realistic. Now you can have five locomotives. You can create what they call a consist. Let's say you have three locomotives pulling 50 cars. you know, And then you want all three locomotives to move at the same time, you know, to take the right amount of power. So you create, uh, it's, you know, on, the, on the, this command station, you would say, okay, locomotive 10, 20, and 30 is a consist. So whenever I give the power, those those three locomotives will go, and then somebody could be on another section of the layout running another train, and he's on his controller. So even though before you had to worry about blocks and stuff, and now it's more like I said, realistic. Everybody's on the layout, like on, just like on the real layout, and and there could be collisions if this guy you know takes the wrong turnout or he's coming down the track or whatever, you know. So uh, so it becomes more realistic, and that's what's nice about the the new technology uh, uh, that allows you this DCC stuff. So basically, uh, you start off with uh, these um, decoders, like I said, that you have to put in the layout. And here's a like a one that I took the shell off. off. There you go. So okay. I took the shell off, and, I, and here at the end of the here at the like there's a section that's cut out, and here's the little print to circuit board. So it's pretty small. It's like a quarter inch by three quarters of an inch long. See, and then it's wired up. See, I've wired this up. Basically, what I did is I've because uh, this is a um, this was originally a DC locomotive, like the standard locomotives, right? So I had to actually insulate where the motor was actually connected to the wheels. I, I put an insulation in there, and then I put the circuit in between. I put the, the wires to the rails, and then I put the other wires to the engine. So now that circuit board is, is in between. So now what it does is it listens for, for its address, and then when it gets the information, it goes forward and back. And then what's nice about these chips is that you also have functions. You have like a headlight. You can have one wire going to a front headlight, one wire going to a rear headlight. 
So when you switch directions, the lights will go on, or you can manually, you can have the, the train actually sitting in the yard doing nothing, and then you can say, turn on the light. You know, or, and, and, the, and it's become so advanced that uh, now they have some decoders that have sound in them. So because there's power already on the, on the layout, you know, these locomotives will, you know, they'll, you have power that you're sending to them, and they have a sound chip and a little speaker inside. So you turn on the locomotive and you hear, you know, chung, 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 the thing is going. And it, <laughs> it's incredible because some of them, like, you have different, you know, different in real life, just like engines of cars have different sounds, locomotives have different sounds. So you can buy a, a, a DCC equipped uh, locomotive that's, let's say, a steam engine or let's say what they call a GP30 or, G, or SD40. And each locomotive will have its sound that was recorded digitally. You know, some guy took a microphone and recorded the real life stuff. And now that's playing on that. Uh, so as you power up the locomotive, you hear like, it starts picking up speed or starts ch you know, uh, chugging along or you have a horn. And it ha it has this the right pitch the exactly the right you know this horn will sound different than that train's horn and then you have all these functions that you can control from your control you can say okay hit the brake and then you hear the squealing of the brakes you hear the the, the horn like I said you hear bells uh, you you can have driving lights on the top of the engine lights on the bottom that you can switch them on and off so all of that in you know, in the, those small little boards so that's pretty cool right that is very cool. Yeah, no, that's and John, you're like hacking trains. That's uh, I mean, yeah. it never cease to amaze me. At what, <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me let me uh, let me switch the camera over to you. Yeah, right. See, this and is you, just another one showing where the, the in this particular model, the, there's a cutout here, and then the chip goes in the bottom of the train. Yeah, and you now have a lot of space in there. I mean, no, that, you don't have a lot of space, especially in end scale. You don't. Yeah. But some of the guys, like you, you know, if you want to equip your other locomotives, like your previous gen, it's tough work. Like I said, I had to insulate, insulate it, and cut out a section of the casting and stuff. But now you can go and you can buy trains that are what they call DCC ready, which is they already have the cutout there. They have just drop-in boards. So what you do is you 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 take out this like a dummy board out. And then, when you, like, you buy the decoder anywhere between twenty and and a hundred dollars, because you know some of them have sound in them and stuff. And then you, that's it. You take out the dummy board, you put in the 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 good board, and just pop it in, and it sits into a little connector. And it's really you know nice and easy. Mind you, at the end of the day, you, you probably spent a hundred and fifty dollars for that locomotive, and then another hundred dollars for that decoder. So you don't want to see that thing flying off the track. You know you have to. <laughs> you don't want to do short circuit on the track at all, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Come flying off and make the connection across the uh, the, the the track. It, it's gone. Yeah. Oh. So then, so now the thing is, you need so one side is to have these decoders and all these locomotives, and then the other side is is to have the command station that's going to send all. That's you know, basically it's like the computer system, which is not a computer. You, you know, it's, it's a track side little box, and it's you want it to do all the work. So some of them are uh, one company, Digitracks in the U.S. They uh, they have a, a great system and that you know, you can buy it modular. But like sort of like a starting system is like maybe uh, anywhere between three hundred and maybe seven hundred dollars, you know. But then you can if you're drive if you have a really big layout, you know, and you're running twenty or thirty locomotives all at the same time, drawing like almost an amp each locomotive. Then you have to you do have to uh, add like boosters because you you'll have a booster that has you know supply ten amps. And you know, if you, like I said, if you have 40 amps of drawing at one time, well, now you'll have to go and buy 40 boosters. But you can still have one command station and talking to all these trains. And there's like a standard. What's nice is just like you know, with printers, we had you know, uh, you, uh, um, parallel printers. You know, there's a standard. Of, you know, everybody makes a parallel printer, but you go and you buy a printer, it'll work in any one of the computers because it's a standard. A USB 2, USB 3, and all this, it's all standards. So this is a standard also. This is what they call it's the NMRA, National. Railroad Model Railroad Association. They created a uh, standard. Say, okay, this is how their locomotives are supposed to run. These are, all, you know, this is all basically the standards. So now everybody who builds these stations or these command stations, they have to follow those standards. So that now, if you go and you buy a, dig, a decoder from Digitrax or you buy one from there's another company uh, NCE or whatever, you want all that stuff to work you know, with, with the system you have. So that's what's nice how those kind of things come together where now those decoders are, it's a standard, everybody follows it. So you can go and buy a locomotive and put it on on your layout and whatever. So, but in my case, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't have the money to spend on that stuff. And, and since I, I have a background in electronics and stuff like that, I said, I'll build my own. Command. Of course you, of course you would. 
What yeah. does something like that look like, John? Like, what does the thing, what does your control unit look like? Like, is it, you know, size of a shoebox, size of a Commodore 64? Well, see, my, the one I have, it's uh, I, I'm, it's made to run four locomotives at the same time. Yeah. And uh, that, uh, let me show you. It's this big. Oh, serious? That's the controller. Though. Yeah, that's a controller. Yeah. See, so this is the controller, oh. and, and in the socket here goes a C, like a CPU, a microprocessor, goes in yeah. there, and then here you down here you'll connect the keyboard and then the power, and basically, and now what you do is, in, see, in this case, this one here, I've mounted this like basically the same board on the back of a uh, 16 by 2 LED. See, so that's, okay. you know, because you want to be able to see, since you're not connected to computer, you want to see what train you're running, at what speed, and all this kind of stuff. So this is a standard uh, LCD, 16 by 16 characters by two lines. So you can get them for like yeah. 8 or $10. So you build that circuit, you attach it. It's made to build, to attach a solder directly to that guy. And then, and then now you have to bring a power supply for the track and for this circuit. And right. this, that's the little power supply. It's incredible how okay. the technology that exists. Like this chip over here, this is called the 18200. Like this guy has got like thermal protection. He's got all kinds of fancy stuff. Before you needed a circuit board like, you know, the size of whatever, uh, uh, motherboard of a PC, yeah. you know. And now it's like a lot of this stuff is built really small. Anyway, like I said, this is this old draw, uh, this chip can draw up to 3 amps. So for a small, like I said, if running four trains at the same time, you can have 50 trains on your layout, but only four yeah. running at the same time. Just how I yeah. how I designed it. Uh, four locomotives running at the same time. This will supply power to this LCD to the track. And uh, let me see. And then you power it from a like a little a one of these wall you know wall plugs like this. So like this guy right. is rated. It's like a power supply for a laptop. This one's rated at the two and a half amps. See, so I take this guy, plug it into my outlet. Here. Don't shock yourself. Yeah, I won't shock yeah. myself. See, I've created different versions of. See, this is again the same as this booster, the booster I just showed you. See, this is a square one. So you can see here, there's a what they call 7805, and here is the 18200 on the side. Well, this guy has the same thing. See, is 18200s on. Oh, let me see on this side. 7805 is over there somewhere. So basically, he he's also the power supply. He's a booster. So mm -hmm. now what I do is I created, I, I made like a phone jack here in the back. So what I do is, hey, here's the power. I'll plug in the power. Some lights will turn on. And then I make this command station. You, you just buy these boxes for what, 10 bucks or whatever. It's plastic. Uh, so, that, that, so, that, so that's, your, that, that's what your hand controller looks yeah. like to tell, it, tell your trains what to do. Where'd you yeah. buy that, John? Uh, any electronic store. You go online there. There's these different guys, and you buy whatever box you know. Because like you know, I make it. You put in whatever box you want. Yeah. So like I said, just like this board, I one board I said I'll make it with a wire, and this uh, I said I'll make it with a with a phone plug. So at least this way now I can keep and the layout plugs in like the, the tracks for the train will plug into the bottom here, and that'll that'll go to the layout. So this this little guy will will supply all the power based on that little that that outlet that I plugged in the wall, he'll give all the power and he'll superimpose whatever digital signal he gets from this controller, he'll superimpose that on the track to talk to these guys. So in this case, you might see some display there, right? You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You bet. See, it's written local. So in this case, it's written like local and then the numbers, like there's four numbers. So I have four locals here. I have local 50, 51, 34, and uh, 3. So you, say, you know, it's like you have to yeah. kind of design how am I going to get how am I going to display the relevant information and this is the the setup we went Those with. Are the locomotive numbers. Yeah. So what what you do is uh, you because you know when you buy your locomotives like they have little numbers written on the side there. See like this one's uh -huh. written in thirty four something. So I said okay I'll program this as local thirty four. So then you you stick it in there and then you have the speed. See so now there's an arrow for direction and then there, there's the speed. So let's say speed from zero to uh, because it's digital, it's what they call speed steps. So you can either have uh, 14 speed steps, 28 speed steps, and 127 speed steps, which means to go from zero to the top speed, if you have 14 speed steps, you'll actually the, the, tr the train will accelerate a lot quicker. 
if you have 128 speed steps, it's then it takes longer for it to reach to 128 because more steps. So then it's more like let's say realistic. So at least mm. again with these standards, they you know they give you different uh, possible uh, um, choices. And then the, next to the like the number 50, there's a little asterisk which means the the headlight on the locomotive is turned on. See, so basically <laughs> from from this lay, from this guy, each row here represents one of the locomotives. So if I want to okay. make the, the first locomotive go faster, I just keep tapping the first button. And then number one, you see the number will start increasing. One, two, three, four, five. I hope keep you're watching the train. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're uh, – yeah, you can take yourself plugged in. <laughs> so this will speed up the train. The second button will slow the train down. The third button will change the direction of the train. And then the fourth button will uh, uh, turn the headlight on or off, toggle it. You can, you can so, so now what happens is – See, so the first train, the way I have it set now is that first train is at speed 22 and is going, let's say, one direction, and the headlight is on. Now, I, so what's neat is with this one controller, I can have four different trains going at, you know, three different, whatever, four different directions, headlights on or off, different speeds. You see how the numbers? So the numbers are irrelevant, right, for this controller. That's just because that's the keypad that you bought, right? Yeah. And you've assigned those 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 keypads to be different. Uh, effects faster, slower. That kind yeah. Of. By the yeah. way, if you're watching the audio, or, I mean, if you're only listening Sorry. to the audio on this, no, you might want to head over to our YouTube page and actually watch this. Uh, this, or head over to theaverageguy.tv/ht166 and uh, watch the YouTube video because John's got some good stuff on here. See, one of the things is that I'm, I'm gonna um, is in the next version is I'm actually gonna create uh, have like a like a volume control, like a pot. So instead of actually pressing up and down and then changing direction, it'll be like a control, you know, like a volume control on the radio. But they have to be digital. See, because it's a little, it gets a little technical. But like the the ones that exist now, they're what they call analog uh, volume control. I need a digital one. I, I need one that when I turn the button to one, it actually sends a digital signal. It says zero 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 one, and then you said to do zero 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 one one or one zero. So it gets a little bit, uh, and it gets more expensive to make the to make the whole thing, because now you're, you're good, whatever, more complicated. And then the other thing is, uh, see, I have like what they call emergency stop. I don't know if you could see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing, I'm almost what's, finished. What's the button on the left? The red button on the left. You don't want to know about that one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the, uh, you can't say what that button is. <laughs> that button is actually programming. It's different screens, because instead of, you know, creating a, you know, getting a big LCD, it's like, okay, well, how can I talk? Uh, toggle between menus. So that's your like your main menu. Then the second screen is the uh, oh yeah, this is a play route. So the other thing is now turnouts on your layout. You know you have you have turnouts right, which is you want the train to take this track or that track. What happens is you can have DCC uh, turnouts. You can have, build a circuit. That ordinarily now what it is is you wire that turnout. There's a coil. You wire to some power and you wire to a switch. You press that switch near the layout. You press the switch. Boom! The, the track flips. You press the other switch. The track flips back. Okay. Now imagine that each one of those turnouts had an address, and they're all like daisy chained together. So all these turnouts. So you might say, okay, turnout 52 change this way. Turnout you know 51 change that way. So you program it. So now from this one controller, I don't have to be at a board that has, you know, uh, one switch for every uh, one of my turnouts. I just go over here and I type in. I say that's turnout 15. I type in 15, enter, and it flips the track. I 22, enter, and it flips the track. You know, so it makes it all all. Uh, is that, stuff from is that the second? So the first screen is the locomotives. The second screen is your track, or how do you have it laid out there on your? Yeah, the first. Let me see. The first way. Uh, the first screen is the is the is the the, the trains. Right. The second. Is it this one? Because I, as a matter of fact, I just had a software update to this guy. <laughs> yeah, imagine just like PCs. It's like, oh, we just came out with the. Who, who updates the software? <laughs> who updates the software? You're right in the controls, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I do all the hardware, and yeah. it's my buddy does the software. Oh, uh, okay. He's a software. Guy. He's the guy that I hooked up with. So he, does he do the upgrade? Library. Hey. He does a software upgrade? Yeah. Okay. I went to see him yesterday and he said, hey, like we were talking and stuff. Cause I, I was actually missing some parts, you know, so I went to see him. And, and he go, he orders some DigiKey and he gets all kinds of stuff. He says, come over. I got, you know, because, you know, if I'm going to order one or two parts, it's going to cost me $8 to deliver 50 cents worth of stuff. So he says, no, he, he's an electronics guy too, better nice. than me. Just like uh, Drashna is my Windows home server uh, 
guru, well, this guy Robert Cote, I'll give, I'll pimp his name. Robert Cote, he's my Windows Home Server uh, software guy, and he's an electronics guy. He knows a lot of, not a, a lot of electronic stuff. So yeah. So and then this screen is actually, uh, it shows you the le um, the locomotives, like it says local 50, and then uh, basically what this screen does is it, it gives you, um, remember like before what I was saying is is you can program a, or you can have a sound decoder. And you can say, I want a bell, I want a whistle, I want a break, I want a whatever. So you can actually program these these buttons that you say, okay, it, it, this is like basically it's showing you four lines for each locomotive. So I could program a, a, the first function as a, um, uh, let's say, a, a bell. So when I actually press this button, you see like for the locomotive 50, it changes to an asterisk. So if I program that for the bell, then the bell would be going now. I press it again, the bell would stop. Uh, if the second one, if I programmed it to be the break, and that one, so visually here, if I see they're all straight lines, then I know everything is turned off. If they're, if they're turned to asterisks, so I can mess them all around here. Again, it's a little tough to kind of figure out, but once you you know once you get the gist of it, like you, you would be able to look at it at a glance and say, okay, the horn is on and the bell is on on this locomotive, and on that train it's the whistle and it's the other thing. I mean, you, everything's gonna be noisy, so you're gonna know stuff's working. So that's that screen, and then the other one is like I said with the turnouts, and what you could do it, in this case it's actually saying play root A, which is another thing that we kind of invented, which is pretty cool. Like imagine you know you have a yard and your train has to take like ten five different switch tracks in and five switch tracks out, a certain sequence. You don't want your stuff to get derailed. So what you could do is you could set a, a route. So each turnout has a number. So you say okay turnout one. Uh, I want it to go uh, left. Uh, turnout, the next turnout is 15. It has to go right. The next turnout is so. However, you map it on, let's say, on a, on a you know Excel spreadsheet or just on a piece of paper. You say these are all the these are all the numbers of the turnouts, and these are all the direction, directions they have to go for the train to get to this destination. We call it route A. And then the turnouts have to be in another configuration to get to route B, and another configuration to get to route C, and so on. So what you actually do is you program those those uh, uh, from the programming mode, you, you you program those routes into this guy. So now what happens is then I would just scroll through. You can see I can scroll through uh, the different routes, see A, B, C, D, and it'll, it'll give me the numbers of the uh, the, the turnouts. Like I'll say step one, it's uh, and then it'll tell you me the turnout. Zero seven is straight. Uh, let me see. John, we had a when I was growing up, we had a thing called tank track. I think is what it was called, and you had a very similar keyboard on the top of it, and you could program, right? You could, do, 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 you know, program. I want it to go this far, and then I want it to turn right and go yeah. that far, and then go. And you could program this thing, and the goal was, right, to try and get that thing. You know, it was a tank, right? And trying to get it mm -hmm. out the door and down the hallway, whatever, and have there fun with it. That I think that's a very similar concept to it, right? You're predetermining routes on the track and making sure all the all the tracks are switched, and in the right configuration to get there. Exactly, and then yeah. and you, you can also operate just, you know, like one if you just want to switch one one turnout, you just say the number of it. You know, you may maybe you put little markers on your track or whatever. You say, okay, turnout thirteen. I want it to go left or let's say uh, straight or through, and then you hit enter, and then the, the track it'll send a signal along the track and to that decoder that's connected, and that turnout will switch. So all of that, you know, from something like this, which ended up costing uh, probably costs I don't know maybe. Uh, I don't know, 50, uh, 50 or 80 bucks when you're all said and done together. So it's less than paying uh, three, four hundred dollars. And like I said, the routing stuff, with like turnout routing stuff, like some of these systems, it's only the high-end, expensive ones that give you that functionality. It's not built into the the lower stuff. Wow. <laughs> uh, other Jim wants to know that's all good, but can it deliver a cold beer? <laughs> <laughs> wrong, I would have wrong to put guy. On yeah, wrong, oh, wrong gauge, exactly. I would have to use O gauge and then have a little... Have a little uh, uh, stein. Or oil, yeah. Or, you know, you get oil tankers on your train, but you actually fill them up with uh, with beers. Yeah. Yeah, and then they'd pull into the station and you could... And then... There you go. <laughs> John, I have to admit, when I asked you to talk about this, I had no idea there was this much tech involved. I was yeah, like, you didn't know I would use up your whole hour. No, that's great. That's <laughs> awesome. I mean, uh, it. it uh, I was. I, I'm like, wow. 
this is really this is cool. I mean, I I see why now you're kind of into that now. I mean, it's it's a good. I mean, it's a great. It's a it's a great project. I mean, I'm I'm just like wow, that's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, and what's neat is again, you know, today's technology with the internet and stuff like that, you find out some information. My buddy made that. Uh, basically, he did the software. Like I said, you program. You know, before, like I said, you needed a whole bunch of chips to be able to do one thing. Now these are they're microcontrollers. You know, so you program them with the code. You say, I press this button on the keypad, do this, uh, do the DCC signal. Uh, these are the standards. You give all kinds of stuff. So he did the, the code, then he says, okay, these are the chips that will, you know, because, you know, just like on a PC, you need a certain gigahertz CPU, you need a certain amount of memory and all this kind of stuff. Now you have all the parts. Then the thing is, okay, how do I get that on the printer circuit board? Well, in my case, I use the software, uh, anybody could use it, you download, it's called ExpressPCB. They're in the States. And they have a, like a, for $50, you, they, they allow you a certain size board. So you, you download their software. Uh, and then you, you start to design your board. And you say, this is what I want. So that's where, I, like, I came in. I had to figure, okay, these are the chips. Where am I going to place them on the on on this circuit? How to efficiently use the space on the printed circuit board? Blah blah blah. You know, all the parts. And then I I, I ordered over the internet. Cost you whatever fifty dollars, depending on how much boards you buy. And then they ship it to you in two three days. And then I I you know then I put in the parts. I have a soldering iron and stuff like that. Like I said, you know I can take a part of Media Smart Server. I can I can solder a board like this. And then you buy these <laughs> displays. Like in this case, this is a four, uh, 20 by four. And I made like I said the circuit that it could attach to the back. So like this this whole thing is like it's a command station. The only thing you're missing here is is a uh, is a keypad and the, and the, and like the uh, the the button. See, this is another version I have here where I I used the uh, Arduino, little four by uh, four by four, 16 keys, uh, and I attach it to the, to my circuit there. See here, I actually see you can see here's the booster is actually attached to it, whereas the other one there, like I cut it. See, I, I made it that you can say I you want to cut it so you, the booster is separate. See, so this this has the two people, the whole this is the whole thing. All you bring is track power and uh, and the wall plug, and and everything is everything is in this whatever four inch space. Or like I said, you you make it in a box like this, and you have John, go go back stuff. to the Arduino board. So those, what goes on top of that? So what goes what what goes on top of that? So you get pin control. Is there a, a a controller that goes on top of that? No, that's it. These are the buttons. Oh, they're right there. That's just yeah, that's, yeah, that's I don't know. It's hard to see there. Okay. Yeah, huh? they're flat, they're little push buttons. They make a little tickety tick. <laughs> see, so it. you buy this board. It's already you know it's like wired up. However, you know. Like it's a, it's a it's a matrix. It's eight wires. You know, it's like whatever. You know how digital stuff kind of works. It's like if this wire and this wire, then it gives that output. So anyways, and then you program the chip that depending on which button I press, you know, talk to that chip that's up there and tell it, you know, yes, he 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 he's, he presses this button and do whatever. You know, mm -hmm. then you have your emergency brake. I I I made it so that everything could be like on this one board, but then you also have a connector here where you can just wire those boards to like. Like in this case, I said, you know, wire the, the switches here, you know, the, the emergency brake and, and, the, and the menu button. So there you go. Different iterations, different versions. I've played over the past a couple of years building that. So like I said, I, I focus more on the electronics and stuff, more than running trains. I only, have a, I only have three locomotives and maybe 20 cars. My friend of mine, he's got like, he's got 30,000 bucks worth of trains. I'm telling him, come, come over, <laughs> put him on my layout. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. No, that's. Yeah, that's another little yeah. plastic box you get like for eight dollars, you know, and then whatever. What's on the back side of that? Yeah. Okay. See, like I, the keypad there. Just I made this wire there. You plug it. In. You know, if if you use this guy. So like again, this is the same circuit with, with just without the keypad on the bottom. So I just made a connector. So you would just you know plug this guy into there and and then use those keys over there. And then this guy you can mount it on an LCD. So if you have an LCD somewhere, like this guy, you know you just solder it in the back of it. So a lot of guys and a lot of what the other thing is like I said, what's nice about model trains and you know the different fields and stuff. Uh, a lot of guys that actually. Um, buy these circuits, it's their school teachers because they want to teach the kids like this logic of, you know, how, first of all, electronics. They want to teach them the logic of electronics, how electronics work, and then actually applying it to to, um, 
to something tangible. It's like, okay, we built this, and now you see here's a train. We want this train to go there and that train to go there. How does all that work? How do we move this around? And, you know, so a real-world practice, and, and that's what some teachers are using to uh, to to uh, make their, you know, to uh, teach the students practical way. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. A lot of robotics programs doing doing that kind of stuff. That uh, we, we've got access to them, some of them here in, uh, in Omaha. Wow. And that's what I was Sweet. telling you. Remember last time you were playing around with the, uh, you had your podcast on the 3D printers. Yeah. You know? See, like I said, I buy these, you know, I, I buy these ready-made boxes and I do whatever, you know, whatever. But, you know, imagine you, you say, okay, this is your finished product. Now build a case around that. Mm -hmm. Just like I designed the printer circuit boards, you know, with the software, you could say, okay, 3D printer, you know, you measure everything with a, what do you call it, a caliper. You measure all the sides and this and that, and then you say, okay, uh, make me, a, and then you tell your printer, make me a box so that I can just, you know, pop this in, and, and away you go. So yeah, there that's, you go. They're talking about so that in chat. Has a, Yeah. Yeah, okay. design, design your own box around it. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, like, this is a standard one, you know, this is uh, just actually a right. bigger display. It's not really, I mean, a lot of this is a dead space down here, yeah. big dead space around up there. So, but that's, you know, that's what you get for $10. But, I mean, if you made one out of a printer, that might cost you, I don't know, maybe, maybe at the first run, it might cost you 30 bucks, and then after yeah, that... Yeah, a little bit more. Much. Well, yeah, that print, those those materials are a little more expensive than... Yeah. But it's, it's the price is going to come down on 3D printers for sure. I mean, yeah. Or, you know, you make thing. one, and then you send it to some company that does, let's say, uh, injection, you know, injection molding and stuff like that. Mm. You say, this is, this is the box, you know. Now put it on. You know, make me a mold for it. I want you know, I want a hundred or fifty or whatever, two hundred. Then then yeah, it's worthwhile. But if you do it your one time yourself, and you know, that's maybe you have access to a school. Like I said, I, be, in my case, it's like I'll do with this ten dollar box. If I wanted to, if I was making a thousand of these, well then maybe I'd get a three D printer or have them injection molded. Yeah, yeah. No, I. Uh, that's that's cool. That's very cool. And uh, so how often? I mean. How often do you actually run the trains? I mean, it's just, you spend a lot of time on the hardware. Do, do you sit there and just run the trains from time to time? Uh, not too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, not too much. <laughs> it's like I said before. You know, maybe some people are more into the trains and this and that. My buddy, uh, I told him he's got like I said a, ro a lot of rolling stock. I got a couple of little cars and. You know, I run it. I run it to make sure that the circuits are all working and the turnouts are like they're supposed to do, and the track is clean. and And I run every once in a while. You know, whatever a couple. You know, maybe an, maybe a, just a half an hour, an hour's work. But um, now my but my, like I said, my buddy he has he's got a big uh, um, garden, and he's you know he's now you know what it is uh, anybody has garden now is the time to be working on your garden, planting and all that stuff. Once he's got that all out of the way and everything's growing and it's on, it's it's you know it's working. Then he'll come over and maybe once a month we might run some trains, you know, and uh, talk DCC so, and whatever. So were those photos in your in at your house or someone else's? Those photos the ones that you put up before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, I got a, in the the living room. I cleared out a bunch of stuff because I have to. I want to repaint the walls and stuff there, so you could see yeah. I'm, I'm I'm plastering the walls and stuff. So I said, well, now all that all that stuff is out of there. I'll put that layout there. And, uh, okay, cool. Maybe leave it there for a couple of months, and then because uh, you know what—that's what happens when you're sick. See, Andrew, see what happens when you're married. You can't do that. The wife says that shit's gonna be out of there, buddy. But when you're a single guy, <laughs> it's like ah, I'll leave that there yeah. for a month, maybe two, maybe three, and then six months later, you're like, is that still there? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, yeah, you, know, you can. I was saying to Rennie before on Skype, you can imagine, hey, I'm gonna put together a model railroad. Uh, in the lounge room. That's nice, dear. Where are you going to live? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's nice is with N-Scale, a lot of these, you know, like I said, these guys, uh, I knew, I know a few European guys and stuff, and they make like that layout that I have back there, three by six in N-Scale. There's a lot of track yeah. work. And some of these guys even make uh, layouts, uh, like table layouts, like a living room uh, ta table uh, with a glass, a removable glass top. So they make the layouts and everything, and then they put the glass there and you know, if company comes over, the wife is fed up with it. They just put the uh, what do you call it, tablecloth over it, and it's done. Yeah, no way you go. You know, so uh, and it's, it keeps yeah, the I, away. You know. Yeah, I think I've seen on a, on a couple um couple websites where you know the guys have it out in the garage and you know it's on like the pulley system. So you you go out to the yeah. garage, you do you know you do your stuff, and then when you finish, you chuck your sheet on top, pull it up, and drive the car underneath. 
Yeah, well, that's it. See, you know, again, it has to do like engineering. You know, if you if you make a good layout, you know that that, that the 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 frame won't twist because you know if you start having your know, nails and the tracks popping and scenery breaking and stuff like that, then you know you made a lousy job. But that's what you get. But if you have like uh, like you say a good pulley system and like my that layout that you see in that picture there, it's the the underneath the uh, the frame is actually it's uh, made out of aluminum, like C three inch yep. uh, C channel. I got that oh, wow. donated because when I first built that layout, I was going to some shows. So I asked one of the local uh, guys at you know uh, shops there. I says, "Hey, you want to supply me? Because you know that's a, see that's a, that's an idea there." I got. I says, "You supply me with the aluminum. This way, I won't make it out of wood because wood is would be heavy. Even pine itself is quite heavy. But with the aluminum was uh, yeah. you know, very. It's a lot lighter, you know, not light, but a lot lighter. So uh, and it's not so gonna, the, and it's not and it's not going to move, right?" Yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty uh, durable and stuff, and uh, so that's I, I built it on that. And like I said, I you know I put on the on the frames there, and I can stack them on the on the the framing, and then put it away. And there you go. So, so if, I, you know, I, I, if you have good I, I guess the question, uh, I guess the question on everyone's mind: how 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 long did it take you to put that all together? Oh, that's one of those things. Is like I guess you could say like a lifetime. You know, like that time, that layout. Maybe it took uh, to build. You know, when you do the wood and put it ever all together, it might take you maybe a, a two three months. You know, to put all okay. that track work and all that because each turnout, you know, you have to figure every each switch track, each turnout, you have to cut in a, a hole in the track and to uh, in the the sub road bed, the plywood there to put the coil, yeah. or you have to decide I'm going to put the coil underneath the layout, and you know, and you're thinking, you know, how they say, you know. Um, uh, right once, cut or right twice, cut once. Like you, yeah. you know, if you pass the yeah, sub, me, me, you, me, you, yeah, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Yeah, measure twice, cut once. There you go. So uh, <laughs> you know, somebody you have to think about, uh, and again, you know, you have to think: is this the layout I want to do? You might spend a lot of research time of how you want to build the layouts. You can get books that are, you know, because you want to get something that's that you're not gonna outgrow or you're gonna be bored of. Or you can say this is too simple. You know, and you can build it yep. in sections. You can say, okay, I'll just build this yard and, and a couple of tracks. At least the train can go and come back. But then this other yep. yard back there, I'll just put a, a switch track there, and, and I'll just leave that for like further future expansion. You know, okay. so uh, yep, yep. and like I said, so then depending pretty... on how how much you want to spend, like as far as like scenery, how much time and stuff. Like I said, I had that layout forever, at least twenty whatever twenty years, and my scenery is yep. not finished because I just I'm not that really good at scenery. So it's like I'd rather not spend money and you know waste money on and then be a mess. So uh, it's like okay, there's basic scenery to give, like I said, the perception of you know space and mountains and this and that. But as far yeah, as yeah. coloring and this and that, maybe I'll find somebody and and we can be friends and they can. <laughs> <laughs> my my brother uh, has one in his garage and he did the the fold up method. So they. You know, he built out away from the wall about this far to cover his, you know, the the height of the scenery, mm -hmm. and then it's just on a big hinge, and so it just goes up and uh, and sits there. And then when he, when he needs it, he can pull it down. You got to make sure all your everything Maybe on there is secure. Yeah, glued down or attached really well. Oh yeah, because I mean, some of these little guys, especially like in end scale, I mean, you know, th these little figurines are like, you know, they're half an inch tall, and they they might cost you like yeah. seventy five cents a dollar each. A few of those guys, you know, you have, you know, you buy a few dozen or whatever. Some of those guys, you know, the shop vac gets them or whatever. You know, they go flying with the wind. <laughs> the vacuum you're gonna, lose, you're gonna be losing money. Yeah, you're gonna be losing yeah. money. So it's it's good to uh, to make sure you glue everything down so that stuff doesn't go flying. I remember yeah. when a few years ago I had made a layout and I wanted to make it winterized. You know, I wanted it to look like all snow. So that's easy. You just pass you know, the the water bottle and then you throw like flour on it and then it gets or plaster. You know, like a uh, almost like flour plaster. And then everything is white. And then you well then you pass these things to so that you know you can get clean the track. You know, you pass like a a tool that'll take it out between the rails. But let me tell you, you know, after you get fed up of that snow, it's it's like you know, it's like going to see the dentist. You know, trying to clean your teeth there. It's like you can't get that stuff off after. So if you go winter, <laughs> it'll be winter forever. Paint it green. Yeah. <laughs> Just paint the snow green. It's now grass. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, some of that new stuff. Yeah. No, very cool. Plus, did. Yeah. Nice. Well, John, thanks. That's uh, that is an, that's a great that's a great overview. I mean, I. I I like I said I didn't anticipate that much detail and that's really really cool. I I just cool. That is, it's been a, yeah it's been a long time since I've 
thought, you know, we started this off by saying that, uh, you know, my dad did this. And, I, and as a kid, I thought about it, never thought of all the complexities of going into that. And uh, really cool what you're doing with the circuit boards there, too, and, and all the controls built in. You know, your uh, next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, about a Garmin 220. Oh. And next week, I'm going to talk about that from a fitness perspective. Andrew, we'll have to have you back on because you and I were talking about some fitness equipment. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, just before the show, but so next week. But you know, you think about this, John. There's a lot of controls built into this thing mm -hmm. that have to be run with four buttons, right? And so it's that same thing that you're talking about. It's a combination of, okay, so I click this one and then that one twice, and then yeah. this one. What's the know, menu and stuff like? Imagine yeah. that's it. If you were that programmer and you just say, how am I going to make it like aesthetically pleasing, uh, practical, uh, the functionality? If I put more parts, it's going to cost more money. So you, know, you start thinking about all that, yeah. all those uh, things. That's yeah. what's, uh, like I said, that's what's nice about the, the model trains is you, you have those different angles that you can, you can work on. And, you know, even if I didn't have the electronics, there's still all that, like I said, the, the scenery, the painting, the, the role, the building, the track layout, the uh, photography, and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it keeps you off the streets, keeps you out of trouble. Keeps you out of trouble <laughs> is what my mom used to say. Well, that'll keep you out of trouble. <laughs> you oh, know. yeah. Yeah, in fact, my mom, just speaking of my mom, my mom just called me uh, last night. I can't get logged into AOL. Yes, she still uses Jeez. Not the dial-up. Not still the, around? But AOL is still around. She still uses her AOL email. And uh, wow. they've, they have instituted their AOL two-factor authentication. And uh, so now you have to log in, and, you know, they want to send you. And the only way to do that, the only way they can have to do that is through your cell phone. Well, my mom doesn't have a cell phone. So she's like, what do I do? I can't get into my email. So I ended up using my phone number and send it to me. And I, I used TeamViewer to remote into her PC, which is still <laughs> Windows XP, by the way. Well, and uh, remote it into her and, PC. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I did I did put her on Chrome, on the, on the Chrome browser, so she would at least have a modern browser on there. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that makes it a little more secure. That IE8 that's on there is not the most secure thing in the world. But, yeah, my mom, that is exactly something my mom would say. Keep you Well, maybe you get her a Chromebook, no? I don't know. Um, she does two things. She checks her email and she checks Facebook. So I could, there's a variety of things I could do to get, you know, she and, and my brother bought her a TV that, you know, she just flips in between television and the computer so okay. at 9 30 every night she logs into facebook i'm serious this is a woman of of patterns at 9 30 i can see her because i have team viewer i see her pop in almost exactly at 9 30 it's like she shows over 9 30 she's checking facebook for 20 minutes she's really good at sending me messages on other people's status updates <laughs> so you know it'll it'll be like one of my family members like my sister will post a picture and ever there'll be all these comments and then my mom will say jim i need oh you to God, call me no <laughs> she says jim i need you to call me why would i be checking my sister's picture for a message from my mom to call me right? <laughs> That's my 83, 83 year old mother does um <laughs> Uh, on Facebook, so it's uh, yeah, my mom. Funny. It's, it's fun. It's you know, we we won't we won't get too much time with her. So I try to be patient on the computer problems uh, <laughs> with her. So, John, thank you. A uh, couple updates. We'll wrap this thing up here because we are we are at uh, we 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 do all the time. I talked uh, next week. We'll talk about some uh, sports, some fitness tech. You guys asked me oh a while ago if about oh every other month or once a quarter we do some fitness tech stuff. So. We're going to talk about the Garmin 220 that I picked up for the half marathon that I ran last Sunday, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the tech that went into that race because they they're just they continue to use more and more tech all the time on some of the races uh, that they do. We've got I've got Ryan Parker coming. You guys have not met Ryan Parker yet. Uh, Ryan Parker is actually a food guy and uh, and a tech guy, and so he's going to talk about some tech that's being used in the kitchen now, which is really cool. We're going to kind of specifically drill in on that. Ryan's a good guy and joins us sometimes on Saturday mornings. And you know, I've been doing Ask the Podcast Coach on Saturday mornings, 930, if you want to join us over at schoolpodcasting.com. We talk, it's all podcasting stuff. So it's, it's for podcasters. But uh, if you want to join us, you can do that. Ryan is out there as well. And then I mentioned May 29th, we're going to talk some car tech. I'm going to try and pull Bill Pullman back in. And I think uh, Bill Rockwell, so it'll be the Bill and Bill show, and we're going to talk about some of the advanced tech that's going into cars. I guess I didn't know uh, Bill Rockhold's got a sweet race car. 
So talked a little bit about that and get into some of the car tech. Um, and then actually way out in June, I've got a guy named uh, John Nye who's an ethical hacker, and I met him at a conference. In fact, his interview is on TheAverageGuy.tv if you want to go check that out. He, um, I interviewed him for about 20 minutes. I'm going to bring him back on the show, let, uh, let you guys come and join us live and ask some questions right now. It's scheduled for June 19th, and uh, John is going to come on. And i got a couple more things. I spent the day, and I'm, I'm surprised Nathaniel didn't show up, I spent the afternoon with the guys from uh, Code 42. We know them better as Crash Plan, and uh, the couple, their one of their tech guys and their reps were here in town, and I got to go spend an evening with them. And I got some cards. We're going to invite them on the program as well. So not just Crash Plan, but Crash Plan from a technical perspective. So their uh, their biggest user, they verify tonight, 61, 60 gig, no, 60 terabytes of storage. Uh, in there, you know, they say unlimited, and uh, the guys showed me tonight 60, I think it was 60 some terabytes of uh, storage up there. So, we'll be getting Crash Plan back on the show as well. So, some good stuff coming up for you here in the near future. Uh, John and uh, Andrew, stay around for the post show a little bit. We'll, yeah, no worries. yeah, we'll continue to, tr to track on that, but this will end it for the recorded version. I want to say we appreciate all the times that you go out to theaverageguy.tv slash Amazon for Amazon purchasing. Those That account continues to do very, very well. You know what? I had a couple guys. I'm a little disappointed. I had a couple guys uh, take advantage of the Tech Scholarship Fund, and when I mean take advantage, I mean they took advantage. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, anytime you open it up to that, you know something's going to happen. So if you were – if and I, I tried tracking them down. I sent emails. One of them, like the email didn't exist anymore, and it was like a Gmail account. <laughs> and you're like – what happened? Where did you, where did you go? Uh, and I'm not angry or mad or bitter. That we knew, they, and they weren't very expensive items when we sent them out. I knew when I did this and opened up to the public, or the, you, the listener, I knew we would run yeah. this risk. But uh, if you're a regular listener and you were one of those guys, and maybe uh, what I'm going to say is what happened is you just forgot. And so get get back in touch with me, Jim at the Average Guy <laughs> TV. We would love to have those posts. The whole reason I do it is so we generate some content. Mm -hmm. on the site and give uh, give some guys the opportunity to uh, yeah Tim I don't think Tim said really in the really big question mark I, I don't think it was malicious I just think guys got busy or something happened or something went on and, and I'm okay with that and if you can't do the review anymore that's fine too it's not the end of the world but we do have the tech scholarship fund right. if you are interested yeah there's world hunger that we should probably worry about before we worry about <laughs> losing 40 bucks in the tech scholarship fund not that big of a deal uh, so if you are one of those guys love to hear back from you if you're not but you want to try something out let me know love to get if you got new tech around 100 bucks love to buy it for you ship it to you you owe me a, a trip on the show or a post around it not really hard, not very difficult. I'll help you out with that. Let me know. I'd love to do that. We've got some money in the bank, so I'd love to uh, to make that available for you, and hopefully those a couple of those guys will come back, and we can get that done. We're out here every Thursday night, uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out theaverageguy.tv slash live. Tons of new content that I did at Infotech 2014, so if you haven't headed out, this stuff is not going to show up in any feed, so you can't get it through the feed. you got to go to theaverageguy.tv. Search Infotech, I-N-F-O-T-E-C, 2014. About 14 posts out there. There's one or two more. I still got to get done. But about 14 posts, some really good interviews that got done, not because of me, but because of the guests that we had. Really good interviews. You might want to check them out as well. We'll be back next Thursday. Remember, uh, Fitness Tech, Garmin 220. You can look that up in advance. Uh, hopefully, we'll get Andrew back in and because he, he's thinking about, well, should, can I say that? Michelle doesn't really listen. I need, yeah, yeah, Michelle doesn't listen to the show. Um, I, I need to make a decision today. So. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll find out what kind of decision you made next week. Yeah, cool. Very good. All right, guys. Well, for that, we'll end it. Uh, stay around for the post show, and uh, good night, everybody. See you Bye. later. <laughs> yeah, Renny says dead. As dry as a dead dingo donga. As dry as a dead dingo's donger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we got to explain that, then it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. bit of a... <laughs> you got to get an to say it for it to click. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah got I a like couple that. of kangaroo glutes in the top paddock. <laughs> say that one again. Got a couple of kangaroos loose in the top paddock. Ah.
Ah, in the top peg? Top paddock. Oh. You know, like, like you know, know, paddock field. Yeah, yeah. like you're not all there. Yeah. You make me think of that line there. It's like here, you know, I mean, we have French Canadians, right? So, you know, you, when the, I remember one time I was uh, helping one of my friends move, and he's driving the truck, you know, he's a French guy, and, and uh, I, <laughs> I yell out, turn left right here. <laughs> He's there. Turn left, <laughs> right here. What the hell is that? Turn left, right here. Because yo, him is he doesn't get it. Anyway, if you're French, you don't get it. Turn left, right here. Turn left, or right. Here. Turn, left. No, turn left, right over here. Oh. If you're a French guy, you don't. Well, not, I'm just, like, no, because you know he's French. He's speaking yeah, the words for, yeah. for the words, not like the right. like when I one time right. I said, uh, "What's that in the road?" Ahead, you know. So he thought I said, "What's that in the road ahead?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> the road ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all about the placement of the comma. Yeah, right? so yeah. you know, some people there, you know, if it's not their their first language, not that there's anything, it could be anybody. As if that's not their first <laughs> language, it's like, wait, what did he say? John, I need to have you on the podcast more Who's often. Dingo dango. <laughs> 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 yeah, we gotta have a laugh, Jim, or else it's not uh, worth the pain. <laughs> well, the I know yeah, the yeah, funny thing is, is is all the outtakes always come from when you're on the show. Oh. They always that's good. So, all right, they're pinging me. I just got I just got the email. We'll let you guys go. Thanks, everybody. Take Good care, see, guys. No Thanks worries. for listening. We'll, see you, Jim. See, see you. Bye. We'll see you guys. See you, John. See you, Jim. See ya. Bye. Bye.